We are recording. Uh, as president of the Carbondale Library Board, I've determined that it's impractical to have a face-to-face -face meeting because of the COVID uh, epidemic. And this meeting is going to be recorded. I asked for uh, our director to call the roll. You want me to, you want me to do it, right? Well, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Susan, do it, please. That's okay. Don Prosser. Here. Susan Toulis, here. Roland Person. Uh, Julian Pay. Here. Philip Brown. Here. Joyce Hayes. Here. Barbara Levent. Here. Chastity Mays. Here. Harriet Simon. Here. Okay. We do have a quorum. First item is to invite anyone who wishes to address us from the public. Are we? Do we have any guests that have indicated an indication they wish to speak, Diana? It looks like Roland came in through the public, so I'm gonna, I'm just going to promote him into the board. Okay. Oh, don't promote him. <laughs> <laughs> and there are no other members of the public. Very good. Well, the agenda says that the president's report would be now. Uh, I can just report that we're all doing well with COVID and the recovery thereof. Brings us on to the secretary's report from the March 10, 21 minutes. Is there any comments, questions or the like? I had one thing uh, maybe at the end of the librarian's report, the final sentence seemed awfully clunky. I'm, I'm sure we all know what it meant, but it's not. It's not very clear to my way of thinking. We're referring to the fact where it says the meetings will be at the library board meeting. No, no it that says, in, no, number three mm -hmm. under librarian's report. Oh, the librarian's report, I'm sorry. Yeah. Any I think we could just let, delete the we, the first we, any additional funding can enhance what we can do or what we do. Yeah, so it just needs to be cleaned up a, a bit. Okay, no problem, thank you. There is one very small correction under the financial report, number two. Philip Brown seconded, you need a period there. No, but I was seconding the roll call. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve the minutes as corrected? I'll move. Second. Any discussion? We need a roll call. John. <laughs> yes. Susan. Yes. Me, yes. Julian. Yes. Phil. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Chastity. Yes. Harriet. Yes. We have correspondence or communications. No, there is none. Okay. A uh, little after four, Gwen sent out bills and uh, uh, financial reports. Any questions about the bills that she sent out? I'm going to ask a silly one on the one that we just got for the bills to be paid April 14th. I probably haven't looked carefully enough in the past, but who, what are these bills for? Bethany Dennis, is it? And Sean Grossman? And there's one more, I think. Um, Bethany. You, oh, I'm sorry. I Bethany, don't know. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Bethany Dennis is our social worker. Um, the person who reviews their work. And so we pay her a monthly stipend for that. Sean Grossman, I think did a, um, he has a YouTube channel about um, Southern Illinois forests. And I think he did some kind of program that you could um, watch online. And then I'm not sure what your last one was. It's a Q Vanna, V-A-N-A. -A, oh, that one was, um, he had, uh, had part of his salary his paycheck sent to an account and he changed accounts. So it got bounced back. So I had to write him a check because okay. he, closed, he closed his account basically. So we sent him a paper check is the easiest way to resolve it. Thank you. No problem. 
Any other questions? If not, is there a motion to approve the bills? So moved. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the bills. Any discussion? Call the roll. Um, yes. Susan. Yes. Me. Yes. Julian. Yes. Phil. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Chastity. Yes. Harriet. Yes. Do you have any questions for Gwen on the financial reports? Oh, um, I also wanted to report, um, since I've made that report, we have received more property tax just the other day. Um, we received our seventh replacement tax, our mobile home tax, and our final property tax of $137,000, leaving about 8,800 uncollected. And they said, we will not get that. So we've received our property taxes for the year. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> 8,800 not collected? That's pretty standard. It's usually short, about $9,000 roughly every year. So I was expecting worse, to be honest, because I didn't know how COVID would affect it. So I'm happy. <laughs> well, there goes our annual banquet. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a motion to approve the financial reports? Move approval. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the financial reports. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. John? Yes. Susan? Yes. Roland? Yes. Julian? Yes. Phil? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Chastity? Yes. Harriet? Yes. Uh, says we need to authorize the finance committee to approve bills to be paid on the last day of the fiscal year, which would be uh, the end of this month. Uh, those of you that recall how we've done this in the past is we try and zero out accounts to the most, uh, most we can to pay bills up through the end of the month. And that's the finance committee uh, is given authority to do that if that's your desire. Is there a motion to do that? So moved. Second. Okay. Seconded. Moved and seconded to allow the finance committee to approve uh, bills received by the end of the month of April. Any discussion? We need to call the roll. Don? Yes. Susan? Yes. Roland? Yes. Julian? Yes. Phil? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Chastity? Yes. Harriet? Yes. Um, the Finance Committee will need to meet by the end of the month, and uh, I'll have uh, Diana contact the members of the committee to get a time that works with your schedule for that purpose. Um, we have a report from you, Diana. Yes. Um, let's see. Building and grounds maintenance, we um, uh, are going to have to defer revenue in order to um, do the brush roof, um, as I really don't think it's going to get done by the end of the month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it is in our architect's hands. Um, so hopefully that will go out for bid soon and get done early on in our fiscal year. Um, the, uh, we, we had discussed and worked on getting estimates to get a new boiler um, to get away from our electric boiler um, so that we could get something that was a little bit more efficient. However, um, the uh, we were only able to get one estimate and it came in at about 30, over $35,000, which was far more than we expected. Um, so we are, are not going to do that because it would take us about nine years to pay that off. So it's not um, a good way, uh, a good investment for us at this time. Good to know what the cost is in case we ever have one break. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see. That is it for building and grounds at the moment. Um, I do want to talk to you about COVID-19 procedures. Um, 
we haven't had the emergency planning committee meet, but I've been in communication with them. Um, and there are just two quick decisions uh, that I would like uh, the board to weigh in on. Um, one is uh, when to get away from um, from appointment only service. We were hoping to do that a little bit earlier, but um, had a little bit of trouble getting some of our staff scheduled for their second appointments for their COVID shots. So um, I believe that uh, by Monday, um, we will be um, pretty close to immunity on our staff. We'll have one person who'll be about 10 days past their second shot and one person who um, has not elected to get a shot yet, but that's their choice. Um, so I, uh, my recommendation would be to go ahead and do that, but I did want to, you know, talk to talk to you on on the board about that, just because it is a little later than I had expected us to be able to do it, um, and uh, just see if you have any opinions about, you know, delaying further or anything like that. I think they, um, uh, for us as a staff. Um, it's, uh, it feels much less dire to have to argue with people about pulling the mask up over their nose, which does happen quite often when we are just open. Um, if we know that our staff have at least, you know, had the opportunity to become as immune or close to immune as possible. Um, so it's not a life or death situation for us. Um, so uh, that is the plan is to go to, um, to being more fully open. Um, we'll still have a two hour time limit, masks of course required. We will continue to do sign in because that has helped a lot. Um, we, uh, you know, we won't be able to necessarily grab every single person as they're, come, as they're walking through the door, but it does give us the opportunity to walk through um, and identify people who have been in there for several hours and say, hey, what time did you sign in? <laughs> so, um, uh, those that's the plan for that one. And then I do want to share my screen here real quick. Um, and of that plan, when would it begin? Monday. Um, yeah, region, region five is um, well below the state positivity rate. The state is like 5.9. Uh, region five is like 1.5 last time I checked it. Yeah, it's not doing too bad. I know, though, that um, our schools keep coming close to going into what they call the red. So I don't know if that is because of children getting it. Um, but um, but yeah, I think Region 5 is doing fairly well. And there um, have been the ability to get a to get a vaccine is, is very good down here. Um, I'm going to show you this as well. One second. Um, just want to show you this one slide here. Um, so the uh, CDC made um, a new post um, April 5th um, that shows two things. Um, one, well, we did not have any information previously about how long it takes um, for or, or about we knew that that COVID-19 will sit on materials um, for up to seven days. We didn't know whether that was a viable um, transmissible virus or not, how long, how likely it was for um, the virus to come up off of those materials onto a person and cause them to be uh, um, infected. So some new studies have come out and there are two pieces of pertinent information that, that apply to the fact that we currently quarantine all of our materials for seven days. Um, one is uh, some information about transmission. Um, and uh, that is actually the second quote there. Um, findings on these studies um, have shown that fomite, which is surface transmission, um, is there's a low probability of infection. It's less than one in 10,000, which means that that each contact with a contaminated surface has less than a one in 10,000 chance of causing an infection. 
the other piece of information is that um, in an indoor space, um, when an infected person has been in there, the uh, risk of transmission becomes very minor after 72 hours. Um, so some libraries are um, sticking with a three-day quarantine based on that, that 72 hours, and some libraries are getting away from quarantining their materials entirely um, based on that low risk of with the one in 10,000 chance of, of uh, surface transmission causing an infection. Uh, the Illinois Heartland Library System has elected to stop um, quarantining materials um, and some other libraries have definitely stopped quarantining materials as well. So just wanted to uh, get your input. That's something that I probably would have uh, done with the committee, um, with the emergency planning committee, but this information came to us on Monday. So um, having a board meeting on Wednesday, we'll just have this meeting and and get your opinions on um, whether you believe we ought to be continuing to quarantine materials. Comments? Diane, I had two questions about the staff vaccination. Did you say as of Monday, everyone except one person will have been fully vaccinated? Yeah, um, and pretty much as of Monday, um, there will be one person who is 10 days away from, has had their shot, their second shot 10 days rather than 14, but they'll, they'll be pretty close to full immunity at that point. Um, and then I have one person who hasn't started getting shots as far as I know. That's it. You said there's one person who is elected not to get the vaccine. Not to get one yet. They're going to get it eventually, but they have a health reason for, oh, um, for delaying. Okay. okay. And you're not ready to do, do anything about that one person at this point. No, um, I feel like that's their right, you know, um, to choose to take that risk. Um, it's their body, their choice, so. You're right, it is much, much easier to get the vaccination down here than in many parts of the country, especially the Chicago area mm -hmm. where it's very difficult. Okay. Yeah, I think too, we don't have enough demand in this area. We've got lots of supply. And the Civic Center and other places are doing, that's Jackson County mm -hmm. Health Department. They've been doing a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully everybody who is, you know, who can get the vaccine will go ahead and, and get it and hopefully is aware, you know, of how to get it by now. Um, and we'll elect to do that so that our region continues to um, do well in terms of keeping down transmissions and hospital right. visits. So right. given that information and the heartland practice seems to me we could well go back to not quarantining the books. I did get input from staff too, and I had, and I've both, both staff members who I asked who were on the committee said, but whatever works is fine with them. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Susan, you were gonna say something? No, I was gonna ask if the staff had weighed in on that. Mm. What, what is uh, Morris doing, Susan? We are still quarantining five days, and I think my staff is going to leave it that way till the end of the semester. Um, I think we could probably make a case for quarantining three days. Personally, I probably would just not quarantine, um, but I'm not in the trenches, so I feel like I need to honor their, their wishes at least. Yeah. You know, we're looking at what three more weeks, three and a half, maybe. That's mm -hmm. uh, an awfully low, low risk. Right. That is. So, I mean, that's that's lower than you're having a problem, or no, it's not as low as having a problem with Johnson and Johnson, but <laughs> it's, it's still good. The one thing my staff did say was, if we were to, you know, eliminate the qu quarantine on books. Um, I think they still are concerned about things like DVDs. For some reason, they think that could trans transmit stuff more so. And but if you're cleaning them, it would probably you know wiping off the outside. 
that we don't do it yeah. that way, right? No, we don't really regularly wipe off the outs. I mean, we only right. wipe off the outside materials if they're dirty or sticky or something. Right. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, DVDs do um, hard, harder surfaces keep um, the virus on it for longer than the softer surfaces. So the DVDs, um, you know, the virus stays on there for seven days, whereas like on a soft cover book, it stays on for three. Um, so the right in terms of that, I, I think that the really the question, is, I mean, I think seven days seems very excessive right now. We could go down um, to three based on, you know, the information that after three days of someone being in a space, the risk of transmission from anything, any surface in that space is extremely low, or we could simply stop quarantine based on the fact that it's a one in 10,000 chance that you're going to get something off of a surface um, that is going to cause you to have an infection. So I'm fine either way. We could do a roll call vote on one or the other, either three days or none, um, or, you uh, why don't Whatever we do, do. Why don't we just poll each uh, everyone uh, as to their preference, and then uh, obviously you can do that. So I'll ask uh, Roland to call the roll, and we can just speak up if our preferences are. Don, my preference is three days. Susan, three days. Me, none. Julian, my preference is leave it up to the staff. <laughs> Three Bill? days. Joyce? Three days. Barbara? None. Chastity? Three days. Harriet? Three days. It sounds like a good transition, I think. But who knows? Leaving it up to the staff is also a good idea, but I'll stick with three days. Clearly, I'm outvoted. <laughs> <laughs> That's democracy. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, any other business we need to talk about from your report, Diana? Um, hooray for Liz. Yes, hooray for Liz. That's, that's, <laughs> that's great news. Yeah. And hooray for Kennedy, too. Yes. Um, I'm yeah. so excited for Kennedy. <laughs> yeah, me too. She's, she's going to be in a big, beautiful library with, a, I'm sure, a fantastic team um, doing some really big stuff. Um, she's had to reach out to Liz so she can <laughs> get some ideas because they're doing very similar jobs. But I'm very happy that we'll be able to have Liz uh, Hartman full time um, and uh, that that I, you know, should work out really well. So um, I think that she's she's earned that status and it should help us to keep her for uh, to ensure her longevity here so um that's it for me back to our vote for a minute do we have any thoughts on how long it should be to go with the three-day business um i i think you know the only consideration it's very easy for me to switch to three days we were at three days a long time ago i have to sign in just switch it out it's three days takes the exact same amount of space um, that seven days was taking. It's just a matter of switching the signs. Um, the, uh, the only reason to, you know, the only considerations for getting away from quarantining at all um, are um, if there's further information, um, you know, telling, showing us that it's, it's completely unnecessary, um, you know, cases go to, to nil, that kind of thing, um, further science, um, it, the, uh, it is taking up all the space in the meeting room, but we are obviously not gathering people in the meeting room at this point anyway, so, um, and it takes up the same amount of space to do three days as it does to do seven, um, if we were at some point to go to one day, that takes up a little less space. And of course, if we go to none, then, then we've got nothing. But um, right now, our meeting room is used to quarantine materials and to um, distribute books that are being held for people who bought them through the online book sale. So um, there's not really any reason, any meeting, any meeting space in there. If at some point we need this board to be able to meet in person at the library, we will have to stop quarantining books because we will need the space um, in the meeting room in order to have those meetings. Um, Cause I don't think you wanna meet in the middle of the library. <laughs> You know, if you can't really speak as freely and if you were ever to need to go into um, to a closed session, that would be very, very problematic. So 
I would think her herd immunity will be reached, you know, sometime this summer or as the beginning of fall. And I think at that point it will become unnecessary. I, you know, the virus is going to be around forever. Mm -hmm. um, so, but when, once we have enough immunity, I, I think we can stop worrying about quarantining. Yeah. Does it yeah, affect I, your I think you're right about movement? that. And I think the consensus uh, from the staff as well as the board as a whole is it's desirable to quit doing this. But at the time, for the time being, I think we want to give the staff the protection that, in fact, the CDC has not really said it's we're risk free until we get to that or we go to a, yet another phase of uh, COVID uh, relief from the governor. I think we can stay where we are. If there's any change with the governor's position on anything, Diane, I'll call a meeting for the emergency group and we can move immediately because I think we don't want to defer this unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, that brings us to committee reports. Do we have any committee reports? Unfinished business. New business. You're very quiet today. <laughs> <laughs> How about patron behavior? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're in here, but they make an appointment. And I feel like if you made an appointment, you're not going to misbehave that badly. So, um, or they make yeah. an appointment to misbehave. Yeah. <laughs> so next month, we can probably drum up some patron behavior. <laughs> yeah. I think we all look forward to those reports. <laughs> Anything else? Any other business before we adjourn? If not, thanks everybody for coming. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Right. Stay well.